at UBC here, I run the Wildlife Coexistence Lab, where we study interactions between people and different kinds of wildlife. We focus mainly on large-bodied terrestrial mammals, species that, that tend to get a lot of public attention, sometimes called charismatic megafauna, uh, animals like caribou, or grizzly bear, um, wolves, uh, many different types of species here in Western Canada as well as around the world. My name's Cole Burton. I'm originally from Guelph, Ontario, and I'm an assistant professor here at UBC in the Faculty of Forestry, and I'm a Canada Research Chair in Terrestrial Mammal Conservation. So our lab's quite interested in understanding how species react to their changing environments, the changing pressures we as a society are putting on them by changing the landscape. We do this using a variety of different methods. One tool that we use a lot is what we call camera traps or remote cameras which uh, is a non-invasive technique that allows us to put cameras out in the landscape and let the animals uh, take the pictures, essentially a kind of true animal selfie. The animals take pictures of themselves as they move past these remote cameras. So we deploy these in many different areas and it gives us a wealth of different information on some of these rare and elusive species that are otherwise quite difficult to detect. I first used camera traps, it was during my own PhD work uh, where I was working in Ghana in West Africa. And we were using old analog film cameras which were quite difficult to work with in the sense that we could only get 24 or 36 pictures at a time until the roll was, was, was filled up and sometimes we had really poor quality photos. But those limitations have really been removed as the digital camera technology has exploded with the costs coming down and allows us to get you know, huge quantities of data, really clear, crisp images on, on these species. Um, in a cost-effective manner. And the great thing about cameras is they're out there doing work for us all the time. If we had to send our field staff out there to monitor animals all the time, that would be completely prohibitive and also animals might avoid people and so we might not get that information. Whereas we can set a camera up and leave it out for months or in some cases even a, a year or longer and it continues to record information of the animals moving by it. Um, it's triggered by both the motion of animals moving past it as well as a differential in, in heat. So it, it triggers by warm bodied animals that have a higher heat than their ambient environment. It's very effective at getting a lot of information. Um, we call our lab the coexistence lab because we're really interested in doing science that can try and support coexistence between uh, our society as human society and these types of species that require large areas of habitat and sometimes require low disturbances to be able to persist. As we consider how to coexist uh, or how coexistence between people and wildlife will occur, um, we realize that we really need good information on how wildlife are responding to their changing environments and that's why we feel like this, this information from our camera surveys is really important to help us navigate some of the inevitable trade-offs between conservation and development. And one of the things we're trying to do with our, with our remote camera research is to develop a bit of a network where we know lots of different researchers and government biologists and industry biologists are using these tools, but right now they're using them in isolation. And we feel like if we can bring that together and share information across projects and regions, we can start to get the kind of large scale information we need to really inform our management of our, of our landscapes and, and to start um, really trying to conduct what we call adaptive management where we use the way we're changing the landscapes as experiments that we can get stronger inferences or stronger information from out of our studies. And we think the cameras are one tool that can help us sort of scale up and, and ask these questions at the, at the large scales that are really needed to inform landscape management and human wildlife coexistence.